This is the Bible in one year, day 248. Godly wisdom for your finances. I'm so happy I could cry. I'm so excited that we might have the chance to go to focus our church holiday. I can't wait to see my children's faces when I tell them. This was the reaction of a mother with two young children in our congregation when she heard she would be given a bursary, a discounted rate, to come to focus. At the end of the week, she wrote, It is the best holiday we have ever had as a family. I am so happy. I love the fact that hundreds of people come to focus on bursaries, or even for nothing. Others give generously to make this possible. A few months later, the mother who'd written to me unexpectedly inherited some money from a distant relative. She gave extraordinarily generously. The amount far more than covered the bursary she and her family had received. This is a practical outworking of the New Testament principle that those who can afford give to help those who cannot afford so that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. So much of our world is taken up with thinking, writing and talking about money, wealth and riches. The Bible has a great deal to say about these subjects. However, the biblical position is in contrast to that of today's culture. In today's New Testament passage, Paul tells us that the whole point of the incarnation of Jesus was that you might become rich. However, the passages for today totally redefine this world's understanding of the word rich. From Proverbs 21 and 22. The sacrifice of the wicked is detestable, how much more so when brought with evil intent. A false witness will perish, but a careful listener will testify successfully. The wicked put up a bold front, but the upright give thought to their ways. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Proverbs chapter 22 A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Rich and poor have this in common, the Lord is the maker of them all. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Humility is the fear of the Lord, its wages are riches and honor and life. In the paths of the wicked are snares and pitfalls, but those who would preserve their life stay far from them. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Fasten on your reputation far more than riches. However much money you may acquire, it doesn't guarantee success in life. Victory rests with the Lord. Reputation is far more important than riches. It's better to do what is right than to make more money by cutting corners, dubious practices or greed. A sterling reputation is better than striking it rich. A gracious spirit is better than money in the bank. Our culture values those on the rich list far more than those dying of starvation in the poorer parts of the world. But the writer of Proverbs says, the rich and the poor shake hands as equals. God made them both. The way of true riches is humility and the fear of the Lord. This brings riches and honor and life. It may sometimes bring material wealth, but the New Testament tells us that it will always bring something of far more lasting value, spiritual riches in Christ. Put God first in your life. His plans for you are good, pleasing, and perfect. And there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Lord, Help me to live a life of integrity and generosity, humility and fear of the Lord. 
New Testament from 2 Corinthians 8. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God, also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Follow the example of the one who went from riches to rags. The singer Lily Allen reflects what many people think in her song, The Fear. I want to be rich, and I want lots of money. I don't care about clever, I don't care about funny. I want loads of clothes and loads of diamonds. So many people want to get rich. There are many examples of people going from rags to riches. However, there are few who have deliberately chosen to go from riches to rags. Yet, right at the heart of our faith is one who chose to do exactly that. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. This is the heart of the gospel. Jesus is the example we have to follow. Not only did he leave the riches of heaven for the poverty of an earthly life, but in that earthly life he chose to be born in poverty and die in the most extreme poverty imaginable. He came to earth with nowhere to lay his head and he hung naked and in agony on the cross. He did this in order that you might become rich and that you might have all the spiritual treasures of Christ. Jesus has shown us the supreme example of rich generosity and what it means to become rich. The Macedonian churches followed his example. The trial exposed their true colors. They were incredibly happy, though desperately poor. The pressure triggered something totally unexpected, an outpouring of pure and generous gifts. I was there and saw it for myself. They gave offerings of whatever they could, far more than they could afford, pleading for the privilege of helping out in the relief of poor Christians. Although they were extremely poor, they worked out how much they could give, and they gave even more than that. Paul urged the Corinthians to follow their example. There were many areas in their lives that were excellent. Paul said, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. 
Paul then expounds the New Testament principle that those who have should give to support those who have not. We see this principle at work at Focus and on many other occasions, including the Alpha Weekends. We invite those who cannot afford to pay to come for nothing or for whatever they can afford. At the weekend, we have an offering so that those who can afford it help to pay for those who cannot. Lord, help me to follow the example of Jesus' generosity and to excel in the grace of giving. Old Testament from Isaiah 8 to 10. This is what the Lord says to me with his strong hand upon me, warning me not to follow the way of this people. Do not call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear, and do not dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. He will be a holy place for both Israel and Judah. He will be a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many of them will stumble. They will fall and be broken. They will be snared and captured. Bind up this testimony of warning and seal up God's instruction among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord, who is hiding his face from the descendants of Jacob. I will put my trust in him. Here am I and the children the Lord has given me. We are signs and symbols in Israel from the Lord Almighty who dwells on Mount Zion. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged, and looking upwards will curse their king and their God. Then they will look towards the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will be thrust into utter darkness. Isaiah chapter 9 Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Lord has sent a message against Jacob. It will fall on Israel. All the people will know it, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say with pride and arrogance of heart, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. But the Lord has strengthened reason's foes against them and has spurred their enemies on. Arameans from the east and Philistines from the west have devoured Israel with open mouth. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. 
but the people have not returned to him who struck them, nor have they sought the Lord Almighty. So the Lord will cut off from Israel both head and tail, both palm branch and reed, in a single day. The elders and dignitaries are the head, the prophets who teach lies are the tail. Those who guide this people mislead them, and those who are guided are led astray. Therefore the Lord will take no pleasure in the young men, nor will he pity the fatherless and widows, for everyone is ungodly and wicked, every mouth speaks folly. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away, his hand is still upraised. Surely wickedness burns like a fire, it consumes briars and thorns, it sets the forest thickets ablaze so that it rolls upwards in a column of smoke. By the wrath of the Lord Almighty, the land will be scorched and the people will be fuel for the fire. They will not spare one another. On the right they will devour, but still be hungry. On the left they will eat, but not be satisfied. Each will feed on the flesh of their own offspring. Manasseh will feed on Ephraim, and Ephraim on Manasseh. Together they will turn against Judah. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Isaiah chapter 10 Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people making widows their prey and robbing the fatherless. What will you do on the day of reckoning when disaster comes from afar? To whom will you run for help? Where will you leave your riches? Nothing will remain but to cringe among the captives or fall among the slain. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Woe to the Assyrian, the rod of my anger, in whose hand is the club of my wrath. I send him against a godless nation. I dispatch him against a people who anger me to seize loot and snatch plunder and to trample them down like mud in the streets. But this is not what he intends. This is not what he has in mind. His purpose is to destroy, to put an end to many nations. One of my commanders, all kings, he says. Has not Kalno fared like Carchemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad and Samaria like Damascus? As my hand seized the kingdoms of the idols, kingdoms whose images excelled those of Jerusalem and Samaria, shall I not deal with Jerusalem and her images as I dealt with Samaria and her idols? When the Lord has finished all his work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, he will say... I will punish the king of Assyria for the willful pride of his heart and the haughty look in his eyes. For he says, By the strength of my hand I have done this, and by my wisdom, because I have understanding. I removed the boundaries of nations, I plundered their treasures. Like a mighty one, I subdued their kings. As one reaches into a nest, so my hand reached for the wealth of the nations. As people gather abandoned eggs, so I gathered all the countries. Not one flapped a wing or opened its mouth to chirp. Does the axe raise itself above the person who swings it? Or the saw boast against the one who uses it? As if a rod were to wield the person who lifts it up, or a club brandish the one who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the Lord Almighty, will send a wasting disease upon his sturdy warriors. Under his pomp a fire will be kindled like a blazing flame. The light of Israel will become a fire, the Holy One a flame. In a single day it will burn and consume his thorns and his briars. The splendor of his forests and fertile fields it will completely destroy, as when one who is ill wastes away and the remaining trees of his forests will be so few that a child could write them down. Focus on the reign of Jesus rather than on riches. As Lily Allen sings in The Fear, if we focus on the wrong things, 
we are taken over by the fear. But Isaiah says, don't fear what they fear. Don't take on their worries. If you're going to worry, worry about the holy. Fear God of the angel armies. The antidote to our irrational fears and worries is faith. Isaiah writes, I will wait for the Lord. I will put my trust in him. He warns against focusing on the occult, fortune tellers, spiritualists, and consulting the dead. Tell them, no, we're going to study the scriptures. People who try the other ways get nowhere, a dead end, a blank wall, the empty hole. They end up in the dark with nothing. He also warns against pride and arrogance of heart. In addition, he has much to say on the subject of riches. First, riches in themselves do not satisfy. Appetites insatiable, stuffing and gorging themselves left and right with people and things, but still they starve. However much money we make, it will never satisfy the deep spiritual hunger in every human heart. Second, he warns against making money at the expense of the poor. Injustice is at the heart of so much suffering in the world. Doom to you who legislate evil, who make laws that make victims, laws that make misery for the poor, that rob my destitute people of dignity exploiting defenseless widows, taking advantage of homeless children. There are many countries in the world where we can see exactly this happening. A few people become very rich at the expense of the poor, the widows and the orphans. There are unjust laws and no justice for the people. Isaiah asked the question about the day of judgment. Where will you leave your riches? All this money at the end of the day is utterly meaningless. What good will all your money do you? In this world of injustice and inequality, the prophet Isaiah sees a different kind of ruler arising. The ultimate fulfillment was, of course, Jesus Christ. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The more you allow the rule of Jesus in your life, the more he directs your plans, decisions, conversations and thoughts, the wiser you will become. And instead of being taken over by the fear, the more you will experience his peace. Peace does not come from money, riches, success, promotion, clothes, or diamonds. It comes from living under the rule of Jesus in justice and righteousness, following his example of rich generosity. Lord, I worship you, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Help me to follow your example of generosity and find the path of true riches, honor, and life. Pepper adds, Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train children in the way they should go. When they are old, they will not turn from it. I am so grateful to everyone who has invested their time, love, and prayers in our children. Never underestimate the importance of your time spent with your children, whether as a parent, a children's worker, or a teacher. Your investment will reap a huge dividend. Your teaching and example will help build people of faith and character.